Stop saying these nine things in your interview. When you're preparing for an interview, working out how you'll describe yourself and your skills is key. Some words are best avoided in an interview, even if they seem positive. Some are overused and cliched. While others may understate your abilities, and a hiring manager has probably heard them a thousand times before. Beware of using words that downplay your abilities. If you struggle to talk about your skills, you're definitely not alone. It's common for job seekers at all levels to feel uneasy talking about themselves in an interview. Surprisingly, even chief financial officers and chief executive officers find this incredibly difficult. As a result, people can fall into the trap of using words that tend to downplay their achievements for fear of sounding boastful or arrogant in an interview situation. But an interview is not the time to downplay your accomplishments. It's important to use positive language that sells your strengths. These words can send the message that you're not comfortable talking about your achievements. 1. We. If you had to describe how you overcame a problem at work, do you tend to use we instead of I? Many of us naturally do that, but the interview panel is only interested in your positive impact. It's really important that people get comfortable using I instead of we so the panel can assess your personal contribution to a successful outcome. You can practice saying I by doing some mock interviews with a friend. 2. Just. Often we use just to downplay our responsibilities and achievements. For example, I just assisted with the project, or I just have basic Excel skills. While it's important to be honest about your skills in an interview, using just will emphasize a skill you're lacking or not confident in. Practice talking about your skills and achievements without using just. 3. Only. This word also downplays your abilities. Such as I only worked there for one year. Mike suggests avoiding only as it reinforces that you are lacking in a certain area. If you feel you have limited experience or skills, Instead be upfront about the experience that you do have and how you plan to gain further exposure or to upskill in a certain area. In an interview, you should be pivoting back to your strengths and the skills you do have, wherever possible. 4. Obviously. Your interviewer has probably never met you before, so don't assume that anything is obvious. Using the word obviously can potentially rub people the wrong way as it suggests that the other person should understand something when they may not. Avoid potential conflict by removing this word from your interview vocabulary. A word on sentence fillers, um, literally, like, you know. When we're nervous, it's normal to fall back on words like, um, or you know. There's nothing wrong with the odd um or ah, uh, but using a lot of filler words or repeated words in every answer could give the impression that you're not confident or well prepared. It can be hard to recognize when you're doing this. So try recording some practice answers or rehearsing them with a friend to see if you can pick this up and change the habit. Remember, it's okay to pause for a few seconds before you answer. Avoid these overused words. Some words have been used so often during interviews, they can irritate the interview panel. Examples of these words are 5. Workaholic This term is no longer a selling point. Most employers these days are looking for employees who have a balance between professional and personal life and can manage their time effectively. If you want to show that you're willing to put in extra time or effort, Describe the ways that you are hardworking or focused on getting great results or outcomes. 6. Perfectionist Often we describe our perfectionist tendencies as a way of turning a weakness into a positive, but hirers have heard this term countless times. It can also suggest that you might spend too long on tasks when being efficient is important. It might be worth considering other ways to talk about your weaknesses and avoid this word altogether. If you really believe this is a key problem for you though, describe it differently. You could say that you set very high standards for yourself and sometimes need to recognize when a task has been completed well enough that it's time to move on. 
be wary of using terms that you cannot back up. It's important to sell yourself and your strengths in an interview. So prepare stories to back up your claims. It shouldn't be up to the interview panel to draw these examples out of you. These are the words or phrases that will need good examples to back them up. 7. Resilient slash motivated by a challenge. What are some examples of challenges that you have overcome in the past? Describe what the challenge was and why it was difficult, and then describe in detail what you did to overcome this hurdle. How did you prepare? Did you need to develop new skills? Who did you ask for help? How did you stay positive and focused on the end goal? It's important to unpack any claims that you're resilient so that it's meaningful in an interview setting. 8. Detail-oriented. If you describe yourself as detail-oriented, then make sure you have no typos or spelling mistakes in your application or have missed any important details in the job ad. Have some specific examples of when you used your high attention to detail to pick up an error or oversight that could have been costly for the business. 9. Team Player Almost everyone claims to be a team player on their resume. But it's important to back that up in an interview by describing examples of when you have made a positive contribution to a team. For example, when did you share information with the team, ask for feedback, or support and motivate colleagues? How did you do it, and what was the outcome? 10. What you should say in your interview. Aim to use strong and positive language in your interview. These strong action statements below will show that you take the lead and drive actions to achieve great results. I identified. I developed. I proposed. I implemented. These phrases are perfect for when you need to give examples of skills you use to overcome problems, such as, tell me about a time when you helped a colleague, or describe a situation when you resolved a conflict. Mike recommends giving specific examples using the STAR method, situation, task, actions, and result. With this method, answer succinctly but directly, outlining the situation, identifying the task you set out to achieve, describing your actions, and recounting the results. For example, if the question is, tell me about a time you demonstrated leadership skills, a STAR answer might be. My team recently had to adapt to working with a new system. It was a big shift, especially for people who'd been at the business a long time. S. I needed to get everyone across the new system fast because we had a very busy sales period coming up and couldn't risk slowing down delivery to customers. T. The company provided video tutorials. But I took it a step further and I organized training sessions so my team could be walked through things and have specific questions resolved as they went. I created a buddy system so more competent employees could support others. And I also developed quick reference troubleshooting sheets. A. As a result, we went into our busy sales period with the whole team confident in using the system and knowing where to turn for further support if needed. R. This method gives evidence to the interview panel of how you demonstrated leadership skills by describing in detail what specific actions and behaviors you demonstrated. It gives the interviewer reassurance that you will deal with future problems in the way that they would expect and in accordance with their behaviors and values. If this method is new to you, add some star examples to your interview practice sessions, too. Getting to the interview stage in your job search is an exciting step. Thinking about the words you'll use to best describe yourself and your skills will boost your confidence. When you talk about your strengths, remember to back up your claims with examples of how you benefited the business. With careful preparation and practice, you'll be able to give the interview your best shot.